Well, it's always a delight to have Patrick Doyle in the house. Uh, he heads up Veritas Counseling, and uh, he's going to be with us today. And I tell you what, you are more than welcome to be a part of the broadcast. If you have any questions, you're welcome to call us at 541-776-5368. The number is there on the bottom of the screen for those of you watching on the Dove TV. And there's a toll-free number uh, if you're outside the immediate area with all our listening friends through the radio all over the place. Uh, you're welcome to join us too. That's 1-800-373-5368. And you can ask Patrick Doyle anything you want to know about parenting <laughs> and where to go to resign. <laughs> I think I... Uh, <laughs> Well, I'd say we were talking about earlier. You want to keep your kids to about, what, 11? Yeah. And then get rid of them? Yeah, as soon as they can start thinking on their own, you get rid of them. And, yeah. and then, them. then hopefully they show for your memorial service, <laughs> <Yeah>. right? <laughs> They'll have pleasant memories of you since they left so early. Yeah, there you go. Anyway, uh -huh. parenting is, uh, is both a joy and a challenge. Yeah, well, you know. And, you know, uh, you were gone uh, away last week or the week before, yeah. and I, I, would, I, I talked to Steve about addiction, and I got a lot of phone calls and questions about parenting as a result of the topic of addiction because here's what happens, you know, a, a kid goes off the rails and becomes an addict and what does the parent think? Yeah. What well, did I do? Yeah, what did I do? Right, and I sometimes just, nothing. How did I, how did this happen under my watch? Right, and, and, but the truth is it's not, it's not always necessarily the result of something the parent did. Um, but it brings up a lot of issues which is that as parents, we're deeply concerned about the outcome of our children. Mm -hmm. Right? Well, naturally. Yeah, and as it should be. Yeah. But sometimes what that leads to is us living and or parenting out of fear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and no one is innocent on that one, Perry. I don't think, I, I know I have. I've had to, you know, I've had to have uh, talks with my kids and actually repent of my fear. Uh, particularly as they b they've become both become teenagers, mm -hmm. the fear <laughs> escalates because their mobility increases, the consequences of their behavior and the, the damage that it can do increases. So uh, as a parent, I think fear causes two very prominent problems that I see uh, in parenting. One is fear causes parents to control. And control never leads to a good thing with a kid. Wow. Okay, the other thing fear does is it leads to apathy. Apathy? Yeah, so let's talk about that for a second. So it's my strong belief that, that the opposite of love is not hate. The opposite of love is apathy. No, Non-involvement. Don't care. Okay? Well, so, so when people are lenient, apathetic, mm -hmm. Uh, backed off, okay, very unloving, okay, but sometimes my fear of controlling, my fear of harming the kid by saying no, leads me to backing away, mm. and that's, that's the same as abandonment. Now, you're still talking about children that are obviously under your, your umbrella. It could be any age, Perry. It can, this can happen at any age, yeah, and I see more trouble with parents and their adult kids, because then the, the kid gets to become an adult, and now they can say stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and they do. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and things become yeah. very difficult. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, by the way, Dad, here's the list. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> these, all these things I didn't really understand until yeah. later. Yeah. You know, so um, fear, I, I would say fear is a, is a bad motive for living on any level. Okay. Mm -hmm. But we all experience it. So all of us struggle with it because we care about our kids. Uh, we want good things for them. We, we have... Um, we have dreams and hopes and aspirations for our kids. And one of the things that I really uh, want to encourage parents to do is that, listen, you have to hold your dreams for your kids loosely because they're not yours to control. It's God gave that kid his own destiny, his own, his own life. And I, while I want my kids to do what I hope they do, it's not really my place to say. That's God's business. Mm -hmm. So if I'm pushing too hard on an agenda, and the kids going this way, what do you think is going to happen? They're going to resist. Yeah, and then they and see what happens is is that that harms the relationship. What is it? Uh, you know, and I guess all all parents will. What is it about a kid that just resists its parents? I, I mean, it's a natural thing, and mm -hmm. I don't. I mean, maybe sometimes it's out of fear and mm -hmm. confusion and mm -hmm. disrespect and all that. But mm -hmm. there is this natural tendency if parents say this, the kids go no. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that is. 
I think that reaction is mitigated or lessened by a strong bond, okay? Listen, mm. I, <laughs> what person doesn't want to do their own thing and wants to resist what other people say? I mean, all of us have our own idea what we should do. Right. That's a very natural thing, but it's really my, my strong belief that as parents, we have natural authority, right? Y yeah. Yeah? Okay, so authority is empowered by relationship from my perspective. So while I have authority, without relationship, my, if I have authority without relationship, a, at a really bad extreme, authority without relationship is going to be abuse. Okay? At a minimum, it's going to be control. Mm. So when, 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 when God talks to us about our relationship with Him, He says, we are to love Him in response to how He's loved us. Mm -hmm. He initiated, he, he created, He made the way for our relationship with Him. He was the one who initiated and made that happen. So our lives lived are, are lived in response to His goodness to us. That relational integrity is what motivates us. Now when you see people living in fear religiously, how does that turn out? Um, pretty bond terrible. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's bondage. It's yeah. there's no hope in it. There's no freedom in it. And so that relational reality is at the bottom. And here's what I was going to say: is that you know the goal of parenting is not well-adjusted, successful citizens. It's not. No. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We hope that's a byproduct. But really, the goal of parenting is for me to glorify God. That's hard, because I see the person sitting in front of me, I see my kid, and I see the decisions he's making, and I get very <laughs> scared. I get very concerned. I want to... So, in, in all you parents with teens that are developing into, into adults, this is something I want to challenge you with. As a teenage parent, your job is to control less, relate more. But here's the problem with that. <laughs> As the parent of a teenager, and I see their behavior getting squirrely, my instinct, my knee-jerk reaction is to clamp down and control them so that they're safe and nothing bad happens to them. And I would say this, our job as parents, by God's mercy, is to give them some freedom to fall on their face under our care, where we can help them learn these lessons now so that when they're 18, 19, 20, they don't go off the reservation and go berserk because they've never had the chance to figure out what to do. All right, let me say to our uh, viewers and listeners this morning, uh, this gets pretty dicey. <laughs> <laughs> and you're more than welcome to give us a call. By the way, if you want to remain anonymous, uh, we'll certainly respect that because I, I realize these things can get a little personal, but you're more than welcome. I mean, take advantage of him here. I mean, he's here today. 776-5368 is the local number in the immediate area. And if you're listening, watching outside the immediate Medford area, toll free at 1-800-373-5368. If you have any questions about parenting, because I think what's happened today, there is this overnight um, change in a, in, a, in a child. I mean, it, it happens. I mm -hmm. mean, a lot of parents say, what happened? Johnny went upstairs one night and went to bed and came out a monster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What but, happened? But it never happens overnight. That certainly seemed like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, it appears that way, yeah. but that's never the case, because what happens is, is the relationship over time grows cold. There's harm in the relationship, there's disobedience, there's disrespect, there's, there's uh, you know, lack of attention, there, there's all kinds of things that happen. If we don't deal with those things, our relationship grows cold, and then what we rely on is leverage or power. And for a young person, I'm just speaking particularly of the teenage sect, uh, that's not going to work because they have more time and energy for resistance than you do have for control. <laughs> and they have more support. Yeah, absolutely. I and mean, today, the peer pressure is, you know. And today they have support that we, you and I never had. Right. Because they can Twitter, they can Facebook, they can text, mm. they can, they can be, they can have someone in their ear all day long. And this is another thing about parenting is that, you know, I, I've been through, um, you know, this whole texting thing with my kids. Um, my oldest son, my oldest son Caleb is 16. He has a cell phone and he can text. My younger son, Elijah, 13, he doesn't have a phone yet. He's getting close. But listen, texting is a very dangerous reality. And here's why. You've got a 16-year-old kid. 
He's trying to fit in. He's trying to figure out life. And you have these instantaneous conversations, just instantaneous. So impulsive reactivity, saying things, exaggerating, rep misrepresenting yourself, you know, whatever, happens almost like clockwork. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so as parents, one of the things I think we need to do is help them handle that. Learn how to handle it. Texting's not going to go away, no. right? So we got to help them learn how to handle it. So what I've done is that, and, and my son said to me, he says, Dad, you know, it's really helped that you sit down with me every night and go through my texts and help me figure out <clears throat> how to respond. And I would read his text to him and I'd be like, you know, dude, that really sounds stupid. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, when you read it out loud it to me, it, it does sound stupid. I need to, oh, how do I, you know, so I help. But they're <clears throat> never read with the emotions in which they're written. That's right. But that's all the, that's all the more reason why we have to try to help them figure that out. Yeah. And so, um, you know, it requires a lot of energy and time. But here's the deal. What kind of relationship do I have to have for my son to be willing to let me see his text? Well, you got to have a very trustworthy relationship. And that's something you got to build towards. It's not something that just falls out of the sky on you. You know, parenting is comes with so many challenges today because in the old days you could do restrictions and boundaries. Mm -hmm. Today, can you still do that? You can. Okay, let me, uh, you can? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's harder, but you can. <laughs> Um, you may want to get in on this, 776-5368 or outside the immediate area, 1-800-373-5368. Um, join us, and um, we, you don't have to pay for this session. Come on in. We're, we're doing it for you, and if you don't, you know, give a phony name. I don't care. Just talk to this guy. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Paulina, and I work at the Deaf TV. Did you know that when you support the Deaf TV, you have a profound impact, not only in our community, but around the world? It's your continued support that takes the inspiration and hope in the programs we produce and makes them available to the thousands of people who are watching these videos online every week. Help bring encouragement and hope to our valley and beyond by making a secure online donation today at our website, thedove.us. All right, we're talking about parenting today and, um, you know, that uh, responsibility, joyful, uh, pull your hair out thing that we all go through. Um, and uh, it's, it's a serious thing, but yes. because it's, it's so different today. Yeah. And I, you know, what, what concerns me is, is that when I was, you know, I look back how I was parented. I right. look back how I parented. Right. Which I think we all get D minuses in. <laughs> and then... Um, uh, then I look at my our, our children, our right. adult children, right. parenting our grandchildren. I right. go, gee whiz, I don't know. I just I want to get on a boat and just have it just drift away uh, because it's so different. I mean, you mentioned just the the energy that comes with cell phones yep. and, um, today, and the texting and the yep. twittering and yep. the Facebook. That's right. Um, and the comments that are made. Yep. Now we got this whole new thing called sexting going on. Yep. And I'm thinking, oh man, what do you do with all of this? And how do how does a parent get control? Can a parent use boundaries? Can a parent yep. use restrictions? But uh, again, I would say that <clears throat> the parent's best offensive, defensive strategy is to be connected to the child. So give an example. So <clears throat> kids grow up, they have questions about life right? Mm -hmm. If I'm reactive, if I, if I flip out, as a kid would say, every time there's a subject brought up or there's a difficulty, is the kid going to be drawn to come to me? Well, no. No. So who are they going to go to? A friend. Right. And what kind of information is a friend going to give them? Oh, very limited. Yeah. <laughs> and or way off track. Yeah, right. right. It, depending on where that kid comes from, what their family's yeah, like, their what their world view is. Yeah. yeah. So, <clears throat> One of the important things is, is that my kid needs to see me as a safe place. So I can remember when my, my uh, kids were little, Caleb was learning to read. He was six, five, whatever it was. We, everywhere we'd go around town, I'd hear in the back seat. I'd hear him read every sign we go by, you know, Walmart, you know. <laughs> every, so we're, go, we're going through downtown, and I hear from the back seat, the office, the gentleman's club downtown. I hear him read the sign. And I knew in my mind what the next question was going to be, which is, what, what is, is that? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, in my mind having this debate, like, what do I do? Do I, do I tell him the truth and like 
flip him out or what do I do? And the Lord very clearly encouraged me to give him the truth in a way that was uh, containable for his, his six-year-old mind, five-year-old mind, whatever it was. And so he, he asked, he says, Dad, what is that? And I said, well, that's a place where women go, uh, men go and watch women take their clothes off. And he's like, why? And I'm like, well, some people believe that that's actually fun and that it's good for them. And he says, without missing a beat, he says, I bet they smoke and drink in there, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> wow. And I'm like, yes. Yeah, and he was six years old. Yeah, or five, whatever. I can, he was young, just learning to read. <clears throat> and he's like, he's like, Dad, well, that doesn't seem right. I said, son, it's not. I said, God doesn't want that to happen because it hurts people. But some people don't know that. Doesn't, they don't know it's hurting them. Or they, 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 they tell themselves it doesn't. I said, but, you know, it's important that you know that that's, that's a dangerous thing. Okay. And off he goes. Right. So now let's say I told him it's, you know, a, an office furniture store <laughs> or whatever. And he goes to uh, school and somebody's talking about it. And he says, I know what that is. It's an office furniture store. And his friends are like, dude, what? You're, yeah. No, let me tell you what it really is. Yeah. And then his friends tell him, now, what's he think about me? Yeah. Yeah. You, uh, you basically lied to him. Yeah, exactly. And so this is why I really think it's important because I want my son coming to me for information. I don't want him going to somebody else. That, mm. that, you know, I, I can't trust somebody else the way I can trust me. And I love him more than anyone else, right? Mm. So, but that puts me in an awkward spot as a parent. It's, it's difficult. It's overwhelming. It's fearful for me to try to navigate that very difficult reality with him. And see, if I live in fear, I won't tell him the truth because I'm afraid it's going to hurt him. But if I live in faith, if I trust God for the outcome, I believe God will care for me. He'll give me the wisdom. He'll give me the patience. He'll give my son discernment. If I believe that and I move into that situation with that, that's a wholly different thing because my, the outcome is dependent on God, not me. All right. Let me kind of slip back into the addiction mode just okay. for a moment. Um, this electronic world is extremely addicting. Yeah. I mean, uh, whether it's Facebook, uh, computer games, whatever. Right. And these kids are shutting down and glued to this stuff. Mm -hmm. How do you, what can you say to parents that are trying to interrupt that without seemingly looking like they're controlling or cruel? Mm -hmm. Okay, so first of all, you can't do it in one fell swoop. Okay, you can't just enter the kid's life and just stop the process. Because anybody who's, you know, uh, got a, a, you know, a compulsion going, you know, this is like their life. Okay, you're going to have to sort of draw them out. It's not going to happen overnight. So what can you do to engage them off of the device? Can you talk to them? And here's the thing. It's going to be like you, enter, you, you move toward them and they rebuff you. Okay? And then you let that go. And then you move toward them and maybe they give you a little response. But you, you, you don't push. You don't like take control. You invite. Invite them out of that world. Invite them into your world. Talk to them about something that's important to them. Get involved in their world. You have to get a foothold. And then from there, you can guide some things. But if you're just disconnected, there's no, there's no conversation. There's, you don't know anything about their lives. I mean, you know how many conversations a kid can have in a day that have nothing to do with you? You know how many people they can talk to via text, Twitter, whatever? They can talk to so many people. So they have to learn how to handle that. They think they know. Mm -hmm. They don't. But, uh, it, but, but, but the, the fulcrum point, Perry, is relationship. It's, it's not um, style. It's not power. It's relational. And if, and if you show me a kid who doesn't want to be loved and involved in their parents' life, okay, deeper down, we all want it. Mm -hmm. Every single one of us. We want that. And so I see it as our responsibility as parents to maintain that. It's not the kid's responsibility. They're highly distracted. They're, they're immature. They're trying to figure out life. They got a thousand things coming at them. It's our job to help maintain that. Well, um, I found out something. My, uh, my grandson, one of my grandsons, really got involved in um, one of these computer things designing buildings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's 3D. Right. 
And I said, well, show me what you're doing. Right. You know? <laughs> it was over your head from the get-go? <laughs> 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 You're doing what? <laughs> I mean, it was 3D. Right. I walked in the room, and, and he pushed all these buttons, right. and the room spun. Uh-huh. And I go, oh, okay. So anyway, long story short, I thought, all right. I didn't see any harm in it other than the fact that he was totally into it. Yeah. I mean, it was, I don't know if it was impulsive or addiction or right. whatever, but he was really into it. So we happened to have some... Um, Architect Digest magazines. Right. And I went and got those. Right. And I brought them over and I said, here's what you're doing in pictures. Right. He goes, yeah. And I said, yeah, see, what you're doing here, this is in pictures. I said, so I turned to him, I said, could you do that room on this? He goes, yeah, I think I can. So the only thing I was doing was trying to open up a door to get into his world. That's right. all I was trying to do. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. And that takes time and consistency. So listen. Somebody you're trying to reach is going to know it by your consistency, okay? If you do it once in a while, they just see you as like doing it as what's convenient to you. The truth is, for me to be with my kids regularly is a sacrifice. I mean, I have to spend time in from, their... From, from your point of from view. From my point of view. For time-wise. Yes, I have to, and I have to listen to stories about things that maybe I don't, don't interest me. The only thing that interests me is that it interests them. Mm -hmm. Right. So there's a level of, of sacrifice that's involved that in our world is hard to come by because we're so busy. So I really am concerned about how we basically are in an emotion. We, we tend to emotionally abandon people in, 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 for, for the sake of busyness, for the sake of productivity. But you never see that in Scripture. You never see God relationally abandon somebody because he's got stuff to do. Yeah. Well, he's on a different time zone. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's on that holy. Well, another. He, he's yeah. eternal. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I'm like right now. There's another dimension. Yeah. And so, you know, um, if you have relationship, that's going to take time. Think about your life. Do you have deep relationships with people you met yesterday? No. It takes time. It takes experience. It takes lots of things done together. It takes lots of conversation. It takes risk for you to get to a place where you can trust that person. Now listen, if your kids don't trust you emotionally, they're not gonna listen. Mm -hmm. They tolerate. They tolerate, and then they, and they just watch the clock and wait for it to be time to go, you know, and then they get out. And you know, when, you, when we look at the statistics of what's happening with church kids, you know, we got a problem. In, be, in that what way? It, it, the 80 plus percent of kids who spend four or more years in youth group, when they leave, for college, 80 plus percent don't return. Yeah, they abandon their faith. To the church, they don't, and, and, and what the research is revealing is the reason that is, is because they have no effective relationship with any adult in the congregation. All right, so this brings in the whole subject of mentoring. Yes, it does. And I want, one of the things I'm trying to say is that the main two people I should be mentoring right now are my two sons. I have two kids. Those are my primary mentorees. <laughs> yeah. That's it. So I have one kid who's completely into athletics and the other kid who's totally into the outdoors. So guess what? Wow. I, I got to do both. Yeah. And I've been to REI. I, I you know, I watch, you know, <laughs> Survivor Man. I, does that naturally, do I naturally gravitate to being cold outside? No. But do I do it? Do I get into it because of my son? Yeah. Does he know that? Absolutely. And when he sees me doing that, he knows that's because I care about him. And then he wants to come to me. But that requires me to spend the energy and the, and the time and to sacrifice my own desires. And that's hard when you're in a grind of trying to be productive and pay the bills. I think one of the hardest things to learn as a parent, that you actually gave birth to individuals. Yes. You didn't give birth to clones. That's true. And okay. I, it's really true. Well, and I, I know that the, uh, the, I sometimes wonder if they're my kids. <laughs> they're so I different. I know they made a switch at the hospital. <laughs> no doubt in my mind. All right, we'll be right back. If you got any questions, give us a call, 776-5368 or toll free if you're outside the immediate area, 1-800-373-5368. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Dan and I work at the Dove TV. You know, compared to Portland, Seattle, and LA, Medford might be considered a small market, but at the Dove, we're excited about the opportunity to make a big impact right here in our community. And you help make that happen. 
Did you know that more than 90% of our income comes from people like you? You can help us now by making a secure online donation at our website, thedove.us, or by phoning 541-776-5368. Parenting. <laughs> All in favor of resigning, say aye. <laughs> no, I, you know, it's got its joys, it's got its challenges, it's got its right. up and down. Right. You do want the best for your kids, you do mm -hmm. want to protect them. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you got to realize they are individuals, they're different. Mm -hmm. that, that, that was, uh, you know, that, that was hard for me to, you know. You, you have family traditions. Yeah. Uh, you have things that you do as a family, you have things that that uh, that are unique to this mm -hmm. group of people that you belong to as a family, right? That go outside the immediate family, that go to grandparents and yep. all of that. At the end of the day, you got you got individuals, and their likes and dislikes are not yours. Mm -mm. Some are, some aren't. Yeah, you know. But at the end of the day, you kind of go, okay, uh, you are raising an individual, and you do want them to be successful at whatever they choose to do, mm -hmm. you know. Right. Um, so, um, I don't know, I, I think there are levels. You know, we went through the teenage years and I probably got a D in that. <laughs> 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 you know, then you get into the young adult years and I probably, you know, maybe a C. Right. You know, I mean, I, maybe I'm being too hard on ourselves, but. We generally are. Um, what I have found out was is that you, you you can influence them, you can't control them. Right, and that's the thing that I really think is important is that <clears throat> the greatest source of influence is your relationship. Yeah. And so you don't mm -hmm. want to spend your relational capital on control. Yeah. Because that ends you in a bad place. And so, so what, I, what, what I really wanted to also say today is that look, as parents, this is going to force us into an intimacy with Christ. Well, it's kind of interesting. Uh, you come to that conclusion after they're gone. <laughs> 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 and so you try to recruit with your grandkids. Yeah. Well, there you, know, you go. Yeah, they go, well, I got another shot. I'll try. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, and I don't say that out of frustration. Really. I'm just trying to think of the big picture of right. parents today because, you know, you, you got these things. Yep. Uh, which are <clears throat> absolutely... Uh, part of the equation. Let me ask you this. What do you think of extracurricular activity? In other words, mm. sometimes kids get involved in sports. Yeah. Uh, I guess your oldest yeah. does. Yeah, he's. And yeah. some get kids get involved in outdoors. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of, you know, the other way around. Right. Andy very involved in running and sports and right. athletics. Jason extremely involved in outdoors and fishing. Right. And I enjoy both. Right. Um, but um, uh, how, how do you encourage parents along that line? Well, I, I think that, you know, one of the things we have to do is try to understand what our children are interested in and encourage it. Yeah. Um, rather than superimpose your likes on them. My likes on them. Yeah. Right. And see, there's a lot of conflict in that. And that can take on, uh, that can happen in areas other than like activities. I mean, like, you know, like what, what kind of movies you're supposed to like, you know? Uh, I have one kid, you know, if he sees something scary, he walks out of the room. My Good other, for him. My other kid is like, he's like trying to see the TV better, you know, how do I see that scary thing? Really? They're just natural personalities. One's, one wants to take risks, one's intense, tilt, tilted forward. Uh -huh. The other one's like, more like, let's take it easy, let's like think about this, let's, you know, I didn't, I don't, that's just God made them that way. Okay. Okay, so my job is to help them navigate and deal with what those natural inclinations are going to do to them. Okay, so how do you then, if you have more than one child, right? how do you allow them to become individuals without comparing or allowing them to compare themselves to each other? Right. Well, there's going to be some natural stuff to that, but that's why we stay involved to say, no, wait a second. You know, God made you the way he made you for a specific purpose. That doesn't make your value any more or any less than your brother or your sister or your, your friend or your cousin or anybody else, or me or your mom. Listen, God loves you profoundly and he's, he's in your life for a reason. Mm -hmm. He wants to do something specific with you. And your value is incalculable as a result of what God has done. It's not based on what you achieve in your lifetime. 
And I think that's one of the that's one of the problems we have as parents is we put we overlay this um, you know what you do equals your value. Well, that's not how God says it. My value in God is not based on what I do. It's based on what He did. Mm-hmm. Oh, so if my value is already there, then that's a different place to operate from than when I'm trying to get it. And when you're trying to get that value, I would say that people are always more compulsive. Do you find yourself um, trying to manage your children away from what you experienced as a child? Oh, man, yes. And how uh, do you do that without overdoing it? Well, you know, that's, that's been my greatest... Because uh, you were in an abusive home. Yeah, I was in an abusive home. I was, I was smoking pot when I was 10. You know, I lived on the wrong side of the railroad tracks. I was, you know, my dream at 11 was to be the head of a drug cartel. Yeah. I mean, so... When I said earlier about parenting out of fear, I mean, wonder how I know that. <laughs> yeah. You know, because I've really struggled with the fear of my kids going down that road. Right now, both my kids, neither one of them are ne- anywhere near that road, and Good. they haven't had anything like I experienced. But it doesn't stop me from superimposing my experience through fear onto them. So how do we break... You know, there, I've, I've even attended seminars, uh, it, not as a parent, but, you know, as a, being in ministry. Right. Out of this whole thing of generational curses. Yeah. I read all those books and I'm going, huh? Yeah. Is it true? I, I don't think so. Um, I mean, can, can I break the generational? I, I don't even want to say this because I don't, it, it bothers me. Right. But to, 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 to um, word I'm looking for, it, it, to, to insinuate that I came from a generational curse and I, because I'm a Christian, I got to break that? I'm going, right. huh, my parents were great. Yeah, well, listen, so can... Strange, any- but great. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, after all, yeah. take a look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you know? so can, can any child escape the influence of their parents? No. No. So... Have I ever said something that I swore to myself I would never say to my kids oh, that my dad probably, would say? Oh, a hundred times. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. but am I like my dad? No, I've mm-hmm. never beaten my children. Mm-hmm. I've contemplated it, <laughs> but I've never done it. I, I've never beat their mom. Yeah. So uh, why is murder one of the big ten? Can we take it out? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, you know, my point is, is that, listen, uh, I'm not, as a result of Christ in the world, you know, I'm not a big fan of the whole generational thing. I think that it puts a lot of pressure and a lot of trips on people. Well, it, but here's me, the it deal. It became a whole nother level of excuses. It is. And so here's the deal. If I am struggling with something from my past, is it going to affect my children? Yes. Yes. But does it mean that they're going to end up doing the same thing? No. no. Okay? Because listen, God is in, if, if they're his children, he's working in them. He's not, he doesn't want them to be abused and uh, live in fear like I did. I don't want that for them. And so many would say that I've broken the generational curse. Okay, okay, you can put it in those terms, but listen, I didn't do anything. God entered my life without my permission. <laughs> I was happy on my way to being a drug cartel leader. And God showed up and said, you're coming with me. And I'm like, no, not really. And yeah. And, and, you know, we still have that discussion from time to time about w- whether or not I'm going to go. Yeah. But he is loving and relentless. And he presents himself as a father. He presents himself as a father all throughout Scripture. And listen, he's a good father. He knows every bit of my sin. He knows every bit of it. Stuff I can't remember, he knows. Well, and, I think there's he, a, excuse me, there's a lot of people that have, that are in or have come through a childhood like you did. Right. In fact, I am shocked to find out how mm-hmm, many. I mean, mm-hmm. some of the letters we get here yeah. are just oh, right. over the top. And so um, there are these abuses that yes, occur. absolutely. There are these dysfunctional families mm-hmm. that occur. Sin is prevalent. No question about it. But when somebody has an encounter with Christ. Yep. There's a new playing field. Yep. There's there's new rules. Mm-hmm. There's there's a new paradigm. Yeah. And it's it's just wonderful to see it happen. Mm-hmm. So uh, I realize as a counselor, you have to go in the past yes. in order to deal with the present. Sometimes. But mm-hmm. uh, at what point do we stop blaming the past that that becomes the reason why I am? Right. And we move forward so we don't bring our children through this stuff. Right. Well, 
you know, that, that really gets to the, to the point of where are you as a parent relationally with God? Listen, if you have a difficult childhood, I'm guaranteeing you there's no real solution outside of a spiritual one. I mean, if somebody abused you or abandoned you or, or treated, mistreated you, that's not going to heal because you deny it, rationalize it, minimize it, justify it, work around it, drink around it, whatever. You can do anything you want, but that's not going to heal it. Mm. What heals it is the love of God. Okay. And, and that's something you can't control. So when, how do you get your kids to consider God when they <laughs> see him Maybe you have portrayed to them a mm. reason why you haven't been a good parent. In other words, you've, you, okay, I'm, I'm, this isn't coming out right, but you know, you're so involved with yes, Christianity. Right. Mm -hmm. That your yeah. kids see that as, yeah. sorry, yeah. I, don't, I don't want any part of that. I don't want to have anything to do with what took my dad or mom away. Okay. That's generally what I hear from people. So they blame like, God on that. Well, no, they, I think they blame both. They blame their parents and God, but... But, you know, if somebody's totally into God to the exclusion of their children, that's not godly. <laughs> yeah. You can rationalize it all you want. But listen, you know, if you're at church and your kid's at home and there's no relation between the two of you, even if they don't believe, that's still not, that's not how God rolls. That's not how he operates. All right, because I don't want, I never wanted, and I still say this, I'm not trying to drag myself into I've never wanted my boys to feel the pressure of this ministry. Right. You know, can't say I've been good at that, but... Um, but they do, and, but they and I, do. Under, I understand that struggle. I got yeah. the same struggle. You got this, you're in ministry, yeah. And I don't. I never wanted my kids to ever feel like they had to come in and take over. And right. they're not. They're not even involved in this right. thing. They're out doing something. Other or thing, you know. feel the pressure of what other people are going to say about me, and I have to protect my dad's reputation. Oh, well, there you go. Okay, let's all quit now. <laughs> We're going to end the show early today, <laughs> and today's National Boss Day. <laughs> We're going to have coffee and donuts or something. No, no, no. Hey, we want to take your calls. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Paula, and I work at the Dove TV. Every day we get letters and emails from people who've been encouraged, blessed, and challenged by the programs on the Dove TV. But we couldn't do it without you. Did you know that more than 90% of our income comes from people like you? You can help us continue to bring inspiration and hope to our community by making a secure online donation at our website, thedove.us, or call us at 541-776-5368. Parenting, ah, yes, that's a big job, and <laughs> uh, it's a full-time job, and um, you know, you, you listen to Focus on the Family, Dr. Yep. Dobson, who have developed international ministries over this topic yep. uh, it's ongoing mm -hmm. and uh, it changes uh, yeah. because the culture changes yeah. what do you do um, let's talk about parents that have children in the church but they're going sideways mm. great great question you know I mean yeah yeah <laughs> you got some more to say? Uh, no, I, you know, I'm learning that I can't take on pastors and I can't talk about schools and education. <laughs> what else am I learning about? And my political well, opinions. Well, I can. I, well, okay, you do it. I mean, I, I'm finding I'm glad out, to take it on. I'm just finding out, you know, you have an opinion and then you offend somebody. That's not the point. I mean, yeah. you, but <clears throat> it's got to be tough when you're, you're in a church, you're involved, and all of a mm -hmm. sudden your kids are there, but they're mm -hmm. just, they're there physically, but they're not there mentally and, and spiritually. They're just so in another zone. What I see a lot of, Perry, is this. A church, a family goes to a church and then a kid goes off the, off the rails, goes sideways, and yeah. gets into something that's kind of dangerous or bad or, uh, you know, something unapproved. Mm -hmm. And what I have talked to hundreds of parents over the years, what happens is the parents and the kids within the church, now I know this isn't every time, mm. but this has been the majority of my experience. What happens is the parents and the kids, no one says anything, but they sort of get like bad kid disease. It's the whisper campaign. Yeah, you can't, no one, you know, the kids kind of don't let your kid hang around with them and I don't know what they did or mm -hmm. what's going on, but you know, it's sort of like, they're sort of s sli slowly ostracized. Well, I we get the letters, we get the emails right. for prayer and right. or I send them to you. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> you know, that their kid has been ousted by the, the group. Yeah. They're not part of the group. Right. Or 
the parents are being ousted because their kids involved with right. the wrong group. Right. I mean, all oh, without without knowing all the circumstances. Yeah, all these it, social it, orders. It's, it's, you know. ha it's hard to tell exactly what's happening. But listen, I believe as a church, our job. If if you and I go to church, Perry, together, and you have a kid, or I have a kid, and he goes sideways. If your kid goes sideways, what I would hope is that you'd be able to say, you know, I'm really struggling with my kid, and I'd be like, hey, well, maybe I can have lunch with him, or maybe I can go hang out with yeah. him. How can I engage him? Maybe I can talk to him there for you. There we go, mentoring again. Right, so what, what the church needs to do is involve itself right. in those kids, not back away. Jesus came to the earth knowing what he was getting into. He knew he was coming to get stiff-necked, rebellious, brokenhearted, lost, captive, he didn't shy away from it. His love wasn't cautious. It was extravagant. So as his children, that's the expression we need to have. For If a kid knows that he's out of line with the culture of his church, mm -hmm. and somebody with respect within that community comes to him without judgment and says, hey, son, what's going on? Mm -hmm. Can I help you? What's happening? Let's talk. Let's, let me, what can I do? What is that kid going to think? Wow. That guy cares about me. Mm -hmm. that, that, that one moment could lead to profound change down the road, even if nothing happens right now. I heard something uh, that was uh, really great, and that was this. <clears throat> you know, you, know you, just, you just said it. A family comes in the front door. Yep. Parents go over here. Kids go over here. Yeah. All right. Now, and there's a lot of criticisms going on with this stuff today. Yep. But what I heard one pastor say is, you know what, we're not here to... Um, have you adults go in the adult service and have a good time. Right. And we're going to babysit your kids until you're done. Right. We're actually teaching your children how to worship at their level. Right. And I went, whoa. Yeah. Because that to me is we're here to connect your child with Christ. Right. And to create a relationship that he'll worship or she'll worship him. Right. If we can do that, then all this other stuff will fall into place. Right. And I thought, man, isn't that wonderful? It is. And I would say one of the main reasons one of the main ways that happens is for kids to have a relationship with adults within the congregation. You look at the Old right. Testament, you know, the, the generational connection was, was profound. The, you know, the instruction that God gave the, the Israelites was to, was to talk to your children as they come, as they go, whatever you're doing. In Deuteronomy, and, yeah. and you know what's interesting Six, about yeah. that is, because we always think that the Bible is to be interpreted by, you know, theologians. <laughs> yeah, right. No, wait a minute. <laughs> he said, teach these things to your children. Yes, right. So it was to be understood by kids. Yeah, you know, right. And, uh, and so as, as God, as the character and the person of Christ is revealed right. in a relationship, is that not going to be, um, isn't that going to draw someone? Right, and you can't worship what you don't know. Right. So, so you've got to know him in order to worship him. So, you know, in my, own, in my own experience with my own kids, you know, the spiritual thing's very difficult. It's very difficult because, you know, I want a certain thing. And, and they're, they're, they're not, they, they don't necessarily want the same thing. Can I trust God for that outcome? And that's where I think parents can either move towards control or move towards relationship. It really comes down to, can I trust that God will take care of it? Or is it up to me? And when parents get that burden of the outcome on them, it leads us to some very bad places. And it's very, it can happen just like that. And so here's the thing I would say, you need to be willing to confess. You as an adult? As, an, as a parent. To you, the child? To the child. What? what? Confess what? Whatever your sin is. Whatever oh, God's okay. convicted you of. Right. Listen, son, I, I mean, I've done this and with, with, with tears and emotion. Yeah. Said to my son. You made a mistake. I'm wrong. I, am, I have been fearful. I have been clamping down on you out of fear. God has revealed to me very clearly that's not how he wants it to go. All right. Now, have you ever allowed your child to say, take a time out from church? Yes. Because uh -huh. you, I'm, all right, yeah. you're involved in ministry, <laughs> yeah, right. counseling, right. you're involved in ministry, right. church, right. and the last thing you would do is you want your kids to create a disdain for what you do. Right. Right. So do you, you allow them to chill? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Um, yeah. God bless you. Give me five on that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, because, because you know. what I know is, is that, you know, at 16 and 13, 
you know, if, if my kid has a tournament in, in Eugene and he gets home late sun, Saturday night and he's played, you know, six basketball games, he's thrashed. Right. What's he going to do when he comes to church? Yeah. He's going to be barely be there. And the truth is he, he needs the rest. But not only that, but I think I think we got to cut our kids some slack. They yeah. know what you believe. It's they right. know what you believe in. And they know, mm -hmm. they really do know right from wrong. Right. Yeah, and, and I also, you have to assess, I mean, I've been, a, I've been to a lot of church services in my lifetime, Perry. You have too. Mm -hmm. And I've been to some, and I'm like, you know what? If I never go to that service again, I'm fine. There's others I go to, and I'm like, that was just profoundly good. Mm -hmm. Okay? How is it? A, ask your kid. How, what, what are you experiencing at church? What's it mean to you? Do you enjoy it? Is, mm -hmm. it, is it touching you? What, what's going on? Instead of just assuming that if they go, it's good. That's a mm -hmm. bad assumption. Yeah. What's the relational situation like? Is there somebody there that has, that they have conflict with? Is you know, is it difficult? See, what we just do is expect them to go and just be good with it. Well, we don't do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Why would we expect that of them? And so that's again what I'm saying is you got to enter their world. You can't expect them to come to yours. It's not. It's our job to go to theirs. That's just how it is. I think it's so funny because I look back. <laughs> I look back on it now, of course our kids are adults now, but right. I look back on it now and um, the things they used to say in church and the notes they used to pass in uh -huh. church uh -huh. when I was up <laughs> teaching or preaching, <laughs> they still they have it. That's awesome. I go, this is hilarious. <laughs> What's neat about it is A, they were paying attention. Exactly. But B, it's what I said that triggered whatever I was saying or who else was up there right. that triggered them to write these notes or draw these pictures. I right. Go, oh, this is great. Yeah. I you mean, know, it, it's, it's absolutely hilarious. <laughs> and you got to think, well, you know, God wasn't zapping them for sitting during the service drawing pictures. No. And, and here's the yeah. other thing, Perry, you, you mentioned it. I would highly encourage you to have some fun with them. Oh, yeah. Enjoy them. Don't worry so much about making them good people, why don't you just enjoy the person they are? Don't, don't say you need to be this or be that. Why don't you enjoy the person they are? Mm -hmm. They'll really appreciate that because they got enough pressure. They got enough pressure everywhere they go. Mm -hmm. They need a safe place to be who they are and to be accepted and to be loved and to be nurtured. And as they grow up, we tend to we tend to shift out of that nurture thing. We, we tend to shift into making sure they're going to be safe or they're not going to get in trouble or whatever. And I say, look, enjoy them and find out what, what, what makes them laugh. Well, and, I have to tell you and this. And get involved. Um, you know, um, I, uh, it's amazing how God will teach you humility. <laughs> we're sitting in a restaurant with our two boys. It was after church and um, they were cutting up. Uh -huh. I'll never forget it. And I just, I had lost my cool. I said, you guys knock it off. You, you never done that? Oh, yes, I have. Oh, yes. yeah. And I said, you guys knock it off. Nah, 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 nah. And this was Sunday after church in a restaurant. <laughs> Everybody's there. Yeah, we're just supposed to have this big Christian moment, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. And everything's going wrong. And um, anyway, um, and, I, and I was just trying to be this super spiritual dad. Anyway. Uh, I had had enough, and 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 they, and they, and they kept snickering. <laughs> you know they know how to get dad. <laughs> um, we walked out of the restaurant, and we're getting in the car, and this is no joke. A seagull flew over, and pooped on my glasses, <laughs> and down my shirt. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Mr. Authority got and it all together. And my kids, came, oh, those two guys came unglued. And I realized then, <laughs> yeah. gonna, it was a teachable moment yeah. for me. You know, who gives a rip? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm That's a great there. story. Oh, yeah, it was, it was hilarious. All right, well, Patrick, thanks, buddy. Yeah. And uh, Be encouraged. Don't give up, parents. Really? Be encouraged. Don't yeah. give up. God, God's, God's got it. He can handle it. All right. Hang in there. Uh, relationships more than theory, right? Yeah. Relationship. Right. We'll see you next time on Focus Today. Hi, I'm Jim, and I work at the Dub TV. Every weekday between 6 and 8 a.m., our award-winning news and sports team bring you the best morning show around. It's live, it's honest, 
and it's a whole lot of fun. And you help make it happen. Did you know that more than 90% of our income comes from people like you? You can help us continue to air local programs that share your voice by making a secure online donation at our website, thedove.us.